A school counsellor at Bethlehem College in Tauranga has come under fire for transphobia after publishing her views on the Ministry of Education's curriculum on gender, which I have read and is batshit crazy. Um, Marley de Klerk hit out at schools for deliberately teaching lies to little ones when it comes to their gender. On Facebook, uh, on her Facebook page, she said a significant amount of New Zealand parents are expressing concern and are opposed to the new curriculum teaching children children that you can simply change your biological sex, which of course you cannot do. It is an impossibility. It is a scientific impossibility. Um, And anyone who tells you otherwise is delusional. Um, This woman added that it was confusing for our generation and does not help foster their resilience or mental health. Um, What followed after those comments? Well, to, I guess, get a perspective on the story and get a narrative on it, we're joined by the CEO of Family First uh, New Zealand, Bob McCroskey. Bob, welcome uh, to the platform. Nice to have you with us, mate. Yeah, good morning, Sean. All right, so she publishes this on her private Facebook page. What yep. happens next? Well, of course, you've got the uh, media trolls who are going through uh, Facebook pages for some reason of uh, councillors from Bethlehem College, go figure, and uh, basically take offence at what she has written. And, I mean, what you read out was what she had written. It was pretty respectful. She simply highlighted that a significant amount of New Zealand parents are concerned They are opposed to the radical extremities of the gender and sexuality relationships uh, curriculum in schools. And she um, thinks that it's confusing to kids that we're telling them you can simply change your biological sex. So it was a pretty uh, respectful post, but there's a um, sort of a little group of uh, journalists in New Zealand who are on a mission to ram down gender ideology. Yeah, I know and, this uh, guy, David Farrier, has had a crack at Bethlehem College before. Yeah, and there's also uh, this particular reporter, Anne-Marie Quill from Stuff, um, has done about five or six stories on Bethlehem College, seems uh, very obsessed with it, and actually got rebuked by the Media Council uh, recently because she did this story with some very serious claims about what was happening at Bethlehem College uh, and when when it was investigated and the Media Council reviewed it, they actually found that uh, well, she hadn't actually verified the, uh, or spoken to anybody about what had claimed to have happened. She didn't give Bethlehem College a uh, opportunity to respond before <laughs> publication and what was worse was that she relied totally on the claims of a radical extremist, Chanel Lau. Oh! Oh, Chanel Lau! Oh, he pops <laughs> up, because we've been talking about Chanel a little bit this morning. And well, it's not very uh, good column in the Herald on Jordan uh, Peterson. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I actually just retweeted your tweet on that. Um, you know, but these are the claims that are made to shut down any objection to, um, to the gender ideology. And so Jordan Peterson is going to come into the country, and as a result, you know, there's going to be... But Jordan Peterson isn't even particularly interested in transgender. His whole stick is completely separate from that. Well, I think the argument with Jordan Peterson is that his original rise to fame came because he was willing to stand up to the ideology, and he said, look, I'm not going to use personal pronouns because, you know... Well, no, he said, I will decide what pronouns I use. You've got to be oh, accurate right. here, okay. Bob. He basically yeah, said, fair enough. Don't, a government cannot compel me to say things. It was that well, simple. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is, Sean, that uh, many uh, people working, especially in the public service, are being told that they have to yeah. um, provide their personal pronouns. Yeah. Um, and most people just don't want to. I mean, by, by putting your personal pronouns, all you're doing is giving weight and power to a gender ideology, which is flawed. Yeah. Okay, Bob, but we're getting we're digressing somewhat. Yeah, so what has so Marley de Klerk publishes stuff on Facebook. This journalist Anne Marie Quill and her trolls pick up on it. What do they do next? Well, what they do is they put out a story. Well, um, I think one key point is that the story originally, when it was first released, said school counsellor accused of bullying and transphobia. Oh, okay, now, bullying, you know, yeah. bullying. Yeah, yeah, the bullying. But the problem was that within five hours, uh, that 
uh, heading was changed on the Stuff website to just being accused of transphobia because there was no bullying. Uh, and they even had to put a little disclaimer apologising to the councillor for even accusing her of bullying. And that was because uh, I suspect the school pushed back. Um, Good on them. And that, yeah, so I've got to, to say, that. Bethlehem College, in our experience, they're not like you know, media lovies, they they really don't like engaging. I suspect they're quite steely behind the scenes, but they tend to not engage because Bethlehem College, for some reason, gets a fair bit of stick. Well, they are just one of uh, many um, uh, integrated schools that are going to get the stick. It's just that Bethlehem is the focus at the moment. Yeah. Um, and but, but the chairman of the board of the school, Paul Shakes, who I think deserves a medal as New Zealander of the Year because he just pushes back all the time, yeah. he said, and I quote, but as we've said a number of times, with all due respect, our beliefs will not be changing. Christian beliefs have been held by people around the world for thousands of years because they bring life, hope and flourishing and continue to be just as relevant and valuable today. Here's the key bit. We know not everyone will agree with our beliefs. We respect their right to hold and express their beliefs. We just ask that respect is offered in return. Boom. Yeah. Hey, what's happened to Marley de Klerk since? Is she okay? Has there been any disciplinary action against her? No, no. Um, my understanding is that there hasn't. You'd have to speak to the school. I did contact mm. her direct and just offered her support. Um, I put out a little video summary of, of yeah. the story because uh, this is the other thing is that the... Uh, the, our favourite stuff journalist uh, then rushes off. Once she's spoken to um, both the councillor and and to the chairman of the board, and I think she only did that because she got rebuked by the media council in her last story. Yeah. Um, yeah. She didn't rush off to Chanel Lal, surprisingly, but she did rush off to, firstly, someone from uh, a transgender uh, group, but she rushed off to um, someone that was labelled as a Tauranga health practitioner who immediately, you know, ex um, uh, conveyed horrendous, you know, that it was a horrendous yeah. statement for a councillor to write. Now, I actually tried to find the Tauranga health practitioner, uh, and there's no record of anyone by that name as a health practitioner in Tauranga. So I actually put that in my blog. Nick Minute, um, the story has been changed again online, and it's now a Northland health practitioner with a slightly different name. Ah. So I, I Googled that name. And apparently the uh, expert in gender identity is also an osteopath. Did you realise that an osteopath... I didn't realise the two were, were related fields. It well, sounds I'm like Anne-Marie right. Quill isn't the sharpest, you know, writing implement in the drawer, doesn't it? Well, I, I just think, unfortunately, her agenda's getting in the way of good journalism. Um, they also had a go at, a, at the fact that Bethlehem College um, have a book called... Irreversible Damage by Abigail Schreier. I don't know if you have heard of that book. It's no. a, uh, well, you should. I'll send you a copy. Time, it's the Times in the UK, the Sunday Times, and The Economist named it one of the best books of 2021. And it's a, uh, Abigail Schreier is actually a Wall Street journalist, and she's written about the transgender craze seducing our daughters, and it looks at rapid onset gender dysphoria, which is based around self-diagnosis, peer pressure and social media. And having and white parents quite thing. often too, to be honest, um, as well. Or and, white and counsellors. What stuff, didn't, what stuff didn't do was refer to some of the commentary that has come out from, for example, Sarah Donovan from Otago University or Emeritus Professor Charlotte Paul from Otago University who are actually saying, hey, we need to put the brakes yeah. on, on this issue, especially puberty blockers and... Uh, well, Bob, the fact is the rest format. of the world seems to have put the brakes on it because they were further down the road in this field than we were. And, you know, like the Tavistock Centre closing in Britain, they're saying, whoa, we need to rethink this. And, well, and, and, and you know what I compare it to, Bob? I compare it to the hysteria around the Civic Crash case and, mm. and Peter Ellis. Um, you get... An Id a bad idea that becomes a trend can do terrible damage and be really hard to put, you know, a genie like that back in the bottle. Well, the, the concern around all those types of cases is that I think in the past um, the media would present and go out and search for both sides of the debate and allow intelligent New Zealanders to come to our own conclusions I think the frustration that most people find and probably why your platform is growing is that people have been are tired, have been told what to think and how to think 
by the mainstream media. And, um, you know, this type of discussion, is, uh, stuff will have a policy that they won't even go looking for a, mm. a contrary view to gender I- ideology. It's one of their rules. It's, uh, well, it's funny. To, and, and you know, I look at Chanel Lal's piece, uh, hit piece on Jordan Peterson. Um, firstly, they were taking down lots of comments on it and then they just stopped the comments on the site. Um, yeah. And it seems to me if, you, if you're going to um, front up you got to put up as well, and you've and you've got to enter the debate, but but they don't, you know. And Chanel Lal, as I said, this fellow Chanel won't come on the program this morning, um, and and explain to us why he was he told lies in a large national newspaper, um, which is a real well, pity. Um, and that was the other issue around this um, Bethlehem College is that <clears throat> at the same time there was a a terrible arson attack on a Rainbow Youth uh, Centre yeah, in yeah. Tarana, yep. and that was immediately pinned on um, links to Bethlehem College and Christians. And uh, Chanel Lal is on the project saying, you know, uh, Christians literally burn down our centre. The only problem with that argument is that it's completely false because the two that were convicted had no links to Bethlehem, no links to the church, no links to uh, any kind of Christian group. They were just basically two louts with nothing better to do with their time than light a building. Uh, And... You know, but that th- those types of claims are made. Well, and, well uh, this guy, Chanel Lal, yeah. sounds like a bit of a BS artist, doesn't he? He sounds like a liar. Well, I just wish he would front up and have some debate with well, you. Well, he's I fronted up to, to the project. Yeah, but um, I think it's easy to, for us to front up to, as I, I mean, I know from experience, it's lovely going to interviews where the interviewer is on your side totally different where the interviewer is having a go at you and they've also invited another guest who's having a go at you and I've had that experience many times. <laughs> so, you know, oh, now you're like making me feel like a soft touch, Bob. Oh, you're not, definitely not a soft touch, but at least it's one-on-one and as yeah. you know, we've had a few doozy arguments before, so yeah. it's all good. Now, Bob, the other thing that I, I noticed you've been doing on social media, there is a book in our schools, what's it called, How Babies Are Made or How Do You Make a Baby? Yeah, How to Make a Baby, I think. How to Make a Baby. It's a cartoon book aimed at four years up. Yep. And I've got to admit, I fell down the rabbit hole and watched one of your YouTube or one of your video posting on that the other day. Oh, congratulations. I don't know. I felt horribly (laughs) manipulated by the algorithm, to be honest. That Um, is seven minutes you're never going to get back, mate. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) But I've got to say, that book, I presume, is in school libraries around the country. Yeah, there's an apparent contact at us to say that their uh, young child had seen it in the school library, so it's just sitting on the shelves. Um, it's How Do You Make a Baby by Anna Fisk, and she's apparently some Norwegian writer, illustrator. And, uh, she's not a very good drawer. Huh? No, a terrible drawer, but the problem is that the material is very explicit. Uh, parents were finding it uh, offensive uh, and totally inappropriate for kids. In fact... I had a look at the Google reviews uh, and actually uh, even licensed social workers were saying totally inappropriate, do not expose your children to pornographic images when talking to them about sex. The good news, Sean, is that we did highlight that Paper Plus was selling it as well, uh, targeted for four and above. They've withdrawn it. They withdrew it within a couple of hours of being notified about what was the content of the book. So my my encouragement to uh, parents is just... Find out from your school, do they um, stock the book, How Do You Make a Baby, by uh, Anna Fisk. Get it off the shelves. All right. Or put it in, I don't know, some sealed section. I'm not a great one for book burning. Or, no, or banning, no, but it's appropriate. All we're saying is school li- it shouldn't be in the school library. That's what we're saying. Yeah, or it should be restricted in, in, in the school library. Um, Bob, do you think it's over for Bethlehem College or are the um, Anne-Marie Quills and David Farriers and Chanel Lyles of this world going to keep telling lies about places like Bethlehem? Well, they'll keep attacking Uh, Bethlehem College uh, basically has a DNA that um, they completely disagree with and they're not willing to just sit back and say, actually, let parents decide whether they want their children to be in the school. The fact of the matter is there's a waiting list uh, on schools like this and there's not many waiting lists on state secondary schools. Funny that, Bob. um, but this comes back to original choice. I'm waiting for that list of names that you just listed to go after the Muslim schools. When's that going to happen? Sean? Oh, hang on, Bob. 
Hang on, Bob. I don't want you being anti-Muslim. That's not fair. And I'm um, not. I, I love them. They're, they're, I have wonderful Muslim friends. Yeah, salam alaikum. I, say to, them, I yeah. say to them, good on you for standing up for your principles. But yeah. uh, they won't go anywhere near them. No. Um, Bob, one other thing. I've mentioned Jordan Peterson a couple of times. What do you think of, the, of him? Is he a threat to New Zealand society? Or do you think a force for good in the world? Oh, no, I think he's uh, great. I listen often to some of his podcasts. In fact, his latest podcast, Sean on Marriage, three-episode um, uh, three series. I hope you've listened to that one. It's a very, very... Uh, a bit late for me, Bob. One. A bit late for me. The importance of marriage. Is, oh, <laughs> you never know. But, but look, I, I always think when you... Um, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of free speech. I think these hate speech laws are completely flawed. They're ideologically targeted at certain groups. And and the problem with hate speech laws is that they don't differentiate between hate speech and speech we hate. Yep. And that's the problem. The ideologues pushing hate speech laws just want to shut down things that they disagree with. Uh, and, and we need to fight that. Look, if you don't agree with Jordan Peterson... Don't, don't go. Go. Don't buy a ticket. Good on you, Bob. Right. Nice talking to you, and thank you for Just bringing short. me up to date on a story I should have been across, to be honest. So I hope uh, Marley de Klerk from Bethlehem College for listening. Uh, all strength to your arm. Good on you for saying what you believe in and protecting children.